Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. This is actually the second video I've made today. I just just pressed stop on the last video talking about the V2 Max and fitness last week. So I've actually done 28 and a half minutes on this turbo trainer, just um, pedaling easy. I don't want to go into the training session until I finish talking because I'm hot. I've got the window closed because somebody's cutting the grass outside. The bike's noisy enough as it is. So I'm pedaling nice and slow just so I can talk. I'm actually on the you know the seated hand bikes on this rift. Just to, I've, I've never used it before, seeing if it's any different. This little video, I just quickly want to talk about um, technology, what camera I'm using, what uh, brackets and things I use and tripods I use quite regularly for the activities I do and how I've got this Rift and my bike turbo trainer set up and then my laptop how I put it all together and make a video because I've had now three GoPros and a fake GoPro and a Canon cheap camera and I got a Sony, I think it is, um, bridge camera. So, how have I ended up with the gadgets I've got now? So, years ago, about, I don't know, 2006, I had a really thin camera. I can't remember what it was, but when digital cameras first came out popular in about 2006, so if anyone is watching now, like any Gen Z people, we actually had cameras back in the day. It wasn't black and white. I had this camera and it was the thinnest camera you can get at the time. Thinnest like pocket camera. So it's about that big and it's a thin Sony, about 300 quid probably. You could put it in a little pouch, you've got in your pocket well easy. Had it for a year or two. Uh, I can't remember what quality it was, camera, megapixels, whatever, but... Um, and then they became better, you could have zooms on them and stuff. I don't know how it broke. And... I got a new one. But I had this Canon camera, which is... I can't remember the brand's name of it, PowerShot or something. I think I still got my cupboard. Um, back in 2008 or something, probably. And... I think I had a bodybuilding competition. So, whoever takes the photos is going to be sitting, you know, 100 meters away at the back of a dark room with the flash won't work, the zoom won't work, and the photos they had from it blurry and just pretty crap. So, I upgraded to a Sony camera. Now, I didn't really know much about cameras. I didn't want to fit around with all the different lenses and things you have to take off. So I wanted just a solid camera, but with a, bit, a good zoom on it. So I bought this camera, it's called a bridge camera. So I think you got the normal cameras, they're just like the pocket cameras. And then the cameras with all the photography lenses and stuff. I think they're called DSLR. And then you got this mirror lesson or stuff. But then there's one called a bridge camera. So it's bigger than the standard camera. It looks like it's got a zoom on it and they're probably big cameras. But it's not quite as good as that because the the lens stays on it. So it bridges the gap between that and that. And it had, I don't know about now, but it had like almost the biggest zoom you can get on it. In the catalogue is the best zoom. It had really good megapixels and stuff. So I got it. Still got it. The only thing is though, the battery life wasn't very good on it. And when you put it on a tripod trying to film a video in the gym, you couldn't put um, the power source into it. So when you go to charge it, you couldn't use it and charge it at the same time. So I bought a GoPro camera, but the first one I had was a fake GoPro because I wasn't sure how good they were or whatever. So I went to the shop and bought this known brand £50 uh, camera. First one I had broke. The plastic casing on it was just 
can't remember how I did it, but I broke it. So I took it back to the shop. The next one I had, same one, but replacement. I had a handlebar mount. And I remember I was riding a bike. It's actually this bike on the road. So every pothole and bump I went through, you can see the camera was shaking. And then all of a sudden, then the camera just bounced off the handlebars and fell on the floor, bounced on the floor and scratched and smashed um, the outer casing. But it was the bracket, the bracket broke. I thought, well, if the bracket breaks after one ride, that's no good. So I took it back. And then I bought a GoPro, I think it was the four. Four silver or four black, I can't remember. In about 2018, I think I was kicking about with that. 7, 16, 7, 18. Um, I had a couple of fake batteries for it and a power bank and the things like that. And then I upgraded to the GoPro 6. I had that for a couple of years. And then I bought a couple of cases and a couple of batteries and a couple of handles. And with that, with that one, I could only edit on my tablet in 1080p. So all the settings like 4K and stuff were useless because my computer and my tablet weren't good enough to handle it. Um, and everyone I asked about, like, oh, well, how do you do it? They said, oh, I don't know what your problem is. So I just assumed it was my laptop. But then I got a new tablet, which worked. And then just before Christmas, I bought this new GoPro, the GoPro 11. And I assumed that the settings would be the same. As long as I keep it on 1080, like the GoPro 6, I'll be able to film on my um, film and then edit them on my, on my tablet. Things that they change the settings. Um, it's very complicated, but when they take a photo and a video, and then the camera turns it into an MP4 file, the GoPro, everyone now who's got an iPhone and GoPro and stuff, it's called HEVC. High Efficiency Video Coding. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's some sort of way how it squashes the video into the file. But you need a computer or a laptop which will work with HEVC, otherwise it will not work. You get a message popping up saying this does not work. And I've been on this GoPro uh, forums on um, and groups on Facebook and everybody gets the same question, how to do this, what software have you got, what this you've got, and download this and download that. You can't download HEVC codecs on your laptop, on your tablet, so it was a pain, pain it was. But my laptop's old anyway, I was having other problems with it, it was turning off by itself, there's files I couldn't open anymore, it's really slow. So I decided I need a new laptop anyway. So I searched for ages, a couple of weeks, what laptop to buy. Do I go down the Apple route? Because I've got an Apple phone, it'll make it easier. I've got an Apple and everyone I know has got an Apple, I think. So the chargers will be the same and dongles will be the same. But they're quite pricey, they look nice. So I can take a photo on Instagram and it'll look nice. But when you look at apples, so today, this morning, same question, a man on GoPro 11 site says, uh, what's a good laptop to buy? The question was a bit fluffy really, because it didn't say what he wants it for and where he's gonna use it and things. So somebody said, get this, get that, get that. A man's put on it, Get a, last year he got an Apple MacBook Air, M1. There's an, uh, uh, there's an M1 and M2. I can't remember which one's the best, which one's the newest. But I basically said, apples aren't the best. Because to be the best, you've got to be the same price. So the cheapest Apple Air laptop you can buy is £999 in the UK. Now for £999, you can get quite a good laptop. What uh, depending on what brand you get, you can get quite a good laptop. But that's the basic Apple with only 256 megabytes of space, a gigabytes of storage space. That's not a lot. 
your 4K video, you're going to fill it up hella, real mega fast. When you add on 512 gigabyte of data, um, let me, that pretty much jumps up like 500 quid. So now you're talking one and a half grand. When you go to one terabyte of data, um, storage, sorry, now you're talking another 500. Now you're looking at a thousand pound extra. So now you're looking at the 2000 my mark. 2000 pound for small 11 inch uh, laptop. Now you're going to be editing videos, so you want to, obviously you like watching things and viewing things. So really you want as much space as you like as you can. So you might want to upgrade to the 14 inch or the 16 inch. Now you're talking another grand. Now you're talking up to three grand for 16 inch MacBook Pro with one terabyte of storage. Oh yeah, and, and the eight gigabyte Air one, it's only, yeah, it's only got eight gigabyte of RAM. Um, yeah, RAM speed, equivalent to speed. So if you go up to the 16 gigabyte or it goes, higher now you're talking three or four grand when somebody says oh my apple's faster than your laptop if they spent four grand on it they haven't got the basic one they probably got there's an upgraded battery you can get there's an upgraded memory you can get upgraded ram you can get and a 16 gigabyte they're talking three four grand and what they've probably done is gone into the store and bought a finance because they think oh it's only 55 pound a month 55 pounds times 72 or whatever payments or whatever it is, it's, you're talking three or four grand. They're not cheaper. When you consider the three or four grand you've just spent, what laptop you could have got for that, you could have got a monster of a laptop. Any, anyone you like. So I sort of pieced together all the comments I was seeing about laptops and you need Eight gigabyte of RAM is too slow. You're gonna struggle. So you need 16 gigabyte of RAM. Um, 32 is even better. But get a 16 gigabyte of RAM. You can easily buy another 16 gigabyte card to go in it. All you could do is unscrew it and put it inside. You could buy them for 30 quid if you need to. As long as the laptop isn't maxed out already. What I mean by that is some laptops, it says in the small print, it'll only do 16 gigabyte of RAM but some you can optionally update it to 32 some are called soldered which means the chip is soldered in place so you can't take it out some you can take it out so you could do a little search somewhere either search just can I upgrade my RAM or there is a shop which you're gonna buy it from when you put in a serial number it'll tell you what's available or just go to your local shop and ask them, can I upgrade this? If you can upgrade it at a later date, you could also always upgrade it later on when you can afford the extra £50 and buy an extra chip if you need it. But so go for 16 gigabyte of RAM. Um, then you've got another choice. Do you want to go to Intel or do you want to go on what's that other one called? Radeon. Radeon is called Radeon 5, Radeon 7, Radeon 9. Intel is called i5, i7, i9. I think, by the looks of it, 5 is, five is the same, 7, 7 is the same, 9, 9 is the same. Um, I think, uh, sorry for offending people, Radeon might be a cheaper version of Intel, but not quite as good as Intel. It's better with some stuff, but not as good as other stuff. So pick whatever you want, pick and choose. I went for the Intel one. Because I don't want to be disappointed and wish I bought the better one. So I went for Intel. Now you can either some people say they got a five and it works. Seven's better than five. So five might work or might be a bit slow. Seven's definitely good. Nine's awesome, but it's expensive. Think about this, I'm gonna have this laptop for about five years or more. So for the future, you're better off getting more than you can more than you need than not enough. I didn't want to get a laptop and then moan about it. I'd rather pay the extra couple of quid and get way fast than what I need. So I went for the i7. And then you need a graphics card. So um, I don't know what it means, but like it's got a chip inside which does the graphics and stuff. 
if you get a normal business laptop, they're good for Excel and PowerPoint. And if you're going to be doing a lot of graphic y stuff, they need a graphics card. Now, it makes sense that gaming laptops have games, so they cope with the games. Now, if you're going to be filming 4K, just yeah, a lot of laptops haven't got a 4K screen, but think about it 4K means a lot of data, a lot of detail now you don't be struggling so if a laptop can cope with Fortnite and Forza and FIFA and all these games then surely it should be to cope with the video better than a, a business laptop why would you want to get a laptop made for PowerPoint and Excel and Word so somebody can do payments and in logs and stuff when you want to be doing graphics so get the laptop made for graphics makes sense gaming stroke graphics laptop also if you want to listen to your audio on a laptop because you're making videos of whatever you're making them or sticking on music after most business laptops probably haven't got good speakers because they're for PowerPoint and Excel and Word and whatever software the business uses. Gaming laptops usually play games with audio, music. Yeah, people wear headphones, but that's because they want to talk to friends online without their mum listening. But they've probably got speakers, so you might well get, probably get better speakers with it. Um, so I got a gaming laptop and if you compare the gaming laptop, all the gigabyte and data and stuff, speed and that, you get a lot more bang for your buck. So for example, a £1,000 gaming laptop, it's got all the same details as a £2,000 business laptop. Or a one and a half grand gaming laptop, it's like a three grand business laptop, like I mean with the terabytes and the gigabytes and the rams and the, the the screen and stuff so i searched and searched and searched different brands i've had an acer before we've had a dell before i've got a lenovo tablet we bought a lenovo works computer before um so i've gone for another acer but because it's a gaming laptop it's called the acer predator uh, so, good. so instead of having Acer branding on the box and stuff, it's got its Predator branding. Um, and I went for the best I could afford within reason. I could afford a bit more, but I didn't need to go any further with the price point. So I got a pretty awesome laptop and I'm not disappointed. The only two things, three things, which are bad about my laptop, right? Um, it is hot, very hot. Because it's a gaming laptop, it's doing a lot of things. And it is 4K. Your GoPro, everyone's saying that the GoPros turn off because they're hot. Your phone in your pocket gets hot. If you film on your GoPro or your phone for an hour, it gets hot. So having to sort that video out, it gets hot. Now, Apples don't. I don't know why, they haven't got fans in them. They don't get hot. But all laptops get hot. Every laptop I've had on your lap gets hot. A gaming laptop even says instructions, don't put it on your lap. So it's not a laptop, it goes on a table. You can't put it on a pillow because you'll be blocking the holes for the vents for the fans. So it goes on a table. It gets very hot. Mine doesn't get that hot because it's got fans. And the fans are heavy. So the laptop is heavier than the Apple Air. And the fans are noisy. The Apple hasn't got fans, so that's not noisy. This is noisy. But, so the noise, the heat, and the weight in my laptop are the downsides. But apart from that, it flies. I've had the GoPro films in 5.3K. I've had it on the maximum size video, the maximum size everything. All the settings turn up, and it just digests it easy. No problems. Obviously, it takes time, and now um, something like a minute per minute to to 
render videos. So if you have a 15 minute video, it takes like 15 minutes to render it in 5K. I could easily turn it on 1080 and all the settings off and it flies through it. Preview is it, no problems at all, no issues. Uh, I'm using DaVinci Resolve um, program, which is free to download. There is a, you can pay extra to do an, a, the studio version. I think the only difference is it's got more settings, so you know you've got like different fonts for your writing and different effects and things. I'm not really sure uh, what the normal one's got yet, so I don't need to upgrade to that one yet. Um, I'm just playing around with the normal one to start with. Um, so I commented on this um, GoPro site that you can get a gaming laptop and actually apples aren't cheap or better because they're more expensive for the same thing and a man goes oh yeah but if I've got an, um, an apple 11 inch and you can buy a bigger monitor you can buy a big monitor. You can buy a big monitor for any laptop, tablet, or PC. Um, <clears throat> think about it. Like, Apple Air laptop. It's called Air because it's light. It's light so you can take it around with you. So, if you're a student, for example, you might want to take it on the train back to university. You might want to do some work on the train. You might have an hour free time in between lectures, so you might want to sit on a park bench and do a bit of work. So that's why it's light, so you can take it around the place, because they travel back and forward. And it's, you can put it on your knee. You're not going to have power in the park, so it's got 20 hour battery life. Do you go to the park? Do you go on the train? No. I live at home, my house. I can put my laptop anywhere I like. My mum and dad don't send me to my room because it's my room, I can go anywhere I like. My Wi-Fi reaches out my garden to my shed. If I really wanted to, I've got power there anyway. By plugging your 11 inch laptop into a 50 inch monitor, you're making that laptop not a laptop anymore. So if you're going to stick into a monitor and watch it on a big monitor, you might as well just buy a PC or an Apple Mac with the 50 inch monitor in the first place. So some people say, I've got a curved monitor, I've got two monitors, I've got a 32 inch screen, I use a, a different mouse and a mouse mat. Just buy a freaking PC then. My laptop's lighter than yours. Yeah, but you're sitting on a train table or your university desk. I got, um, where I work, there's a man with an Apple Air. He puts it plugged into the desk permanently. And then he's got these dongles sticking out of it because you've got to plug into it a disk drive and a memory card drive and a dongle for this and a dongle for that. So why did you buy the smallest air portable laptop just to go on a desktop? Um, the battery life's 20 hours on the Apple. Yeah, but you've got a desk plugged in with a monitor plugged in. So just plug it in. Uh, I have got a laptop. I didn't go for the desktop because of that reason, really. I've made a desk out of my old kitchen table. I had a big old oak, no, it was new, but it was old when I chopped it. I had an oak table that had over a couple of years. It's too big to move, it was too heavy. Um, but it's too old to sell it for enough money to make money out of it. So when I bought a new table, I chopped this table up and I made it smaller and I fitted it under my stairs. So I've got a table, a chair, some books and my laptop, like a little office-y type corner space. It's a bit dark under there, but it's... So instead of doing my work on my lap, I do it on the table. So I could have bought a desktop but there might be a time where I might want to move it. I might sometimes do some work on the sofa. Or I might want to do some work in the kitchen or in the bedroom. Because 
if I go to a Zoom meeting or a Skype meeting or we use Teams a lot, but well, when I'm at work, different people use Teams, different people use Zoom, and different people use Skype. So I might want to use all of them three. Um, so I might want to move it around, maybe. And I might want to move it into here. I could put it there on the table, run the leads to my TV, and I could use the, it's got a pretty good uh, webcam on it. I could maybe do a live stream, because I've got a camera there on my tablet, but I don't think I can stream a tablet and Zwift at the same time. But I could put a webcam on the top of my TV and see it that way. I can use GoPro as a webcam. You can stream straight from GoPro to YouTube live, but I could have, you could put Zwift on the laptop. You could then put your webcam footage in the corner of the screen. You could have a few screen cameras, whatever. Maybe if I get the hang of this DaVinci Resolve and the screen record, I might do that one day. So I might want to have a portable laptop. I don't really take my laptop to work with me, but I might. I've got a business plan, I might I'll hopefully start to do this year, so I might want to be a bit portable. So that's the only reason why. I didn't want a big desktop. But for the same price as my laptop, you could get a bigger lap a desktop. I just don't like the big box. The laptop's all in one little thing and it's just tied just a little way. But there's not really much to put point by talking about price because depending on every day the prices change depending on what shop you're in I'm sure most of my followers on YouTube are in America or Britain Germany I think got quite a lot so depending on where you get it from um, I used a money back app so I think I'm going to get a bit of money back you might have blue light cards or discount cards for different shops or whatever so Prices vary day to day, actually day to day. On the same shop I got mine from, there's about five different laptops, very similar. It's a 15 inch screen or 17 inch screen. You can jump from one to the other. A bigger screen, but uh, less power, or less power, but a smaller screen, or um, you can get a blue or black one. Uh, price just, yeah, it depends what you can afford. None of them are cheap, you know. I spent a lot of money on my laptop. I can afford the amount of money I spent, but it's not ch pocket change. Um, and I, I'm obviously talking to people, hopefully, I might be talking to a few people who wish they could afford a GoPro. This isn't the only route, you know, if you can't afford a GoPro 11, you can't afford a gaming laptop, and you can't afford a, a Lenovo tablet and all that stuff. You can go a cheaper route, you can do. Just means you can't film 4K. Uh, you could buy a 720 camera. Um, I'm sure most tablets these days will manage 720. You can go to a second hand store and buy an old, um, an iPhone 10 or an iPhone 11, iPhone 12, or whatever. You could buy a GoPro, well the GoPro 6 I had, for Christmas I sold it to someone else for their teenage son. So you don't need to go to GoPro 11 route. GoPro 10 and GoPro 9 they are pretty much the same. Um, it's just I future proofed myself by buying the best I could physically afford at the time. Because I work hard and I want some gadgets. I don't smoke and don't drink so I just... Um, yeah but if you're in a different country and you're watching this from a down to poverty level or just a bit less than middle level um, you can do videos other ways you can you can buy different gopros second hand gopros different phones and different laptops i'm just talking about um first class no i'm not i'm not rich in the grand scheme of things I'm fit and healthy and I'm doing okay financially, but I'm not rich by any means. I'm, I'm not sure what the average wage is. 
the average living price, living wage, but I'm not nowhere near rich. I'm not some sort of millionaire YouTuber. Um, but that's the sort of gear I've got for GoPro laptop drifting. I've got um oh this video's gone on long enough and I can't it's gonna another video actually. Uh tripod, microphones, what memory cards you need, what batteries you need, what handles you need and chest strap, head strap, hat thing, car mount. God we could talk about GoPros all day. Uh, I've done an hour so far and I haven't even gone on a training session. Than 420 calories in an hour just paddling and talking so i'm gonna wrap this video up say you goodbye then i need to open my window to my fan on have a drink and actually do my training session i can put my headphones on and unmute this video i've had to mute it because otherwise it'll be copyright for the music i'm watching i've let it play just as a bit of entertaining in the background maybe the light might make it better so you probably haven't watched all this video but um skip through it i might put a link in the bottom if i edit it to what gear i've got and uh, see you soon stay tuned